Allen sells probably some of the probably the best uh, real rate dopes, paints, clears, thinners, everything necessary for painting, retarder, uh, <clears throat> full line of control line model airplane accessories, lines, handles, everything you need to think of. So anybody got any questions about paint? I'm talking about paint. Do you want to show your paint stand first? Well, I could. Okay. Paint stand is something that's very important for painting a model airplane. This gentleman has designed this himself. No, no, I didn't design it. Okay. This is kind of a takeoff and slot modification of Byron Barker stand. Okay. I, I did modify it a little bit, make it easier to use and easier for me to make. It still has the lock. Put this anywhere you want, lock it down, and it's there. It won't move. And I make them up. I usually have one or two at home in stock. I make them at my house. And I, a lot of times, I can ship one 24 hours after somebody orders one. They're, uh, I've had to raise my price because steel prices have gone up considerably. Well, how much are they? Oh, uh, these two I've got here, that's a, that's a flying for for $100. The, uh, the next batch I'm asking them have to be $115. Because steel's going up. I'm not making a penny on these stands that I brought up here. I'm breaking even. But I told everybody that I was going to bring them at $100 and I stick to what I said. So after this, it'll be $115. And I ship them anywhere in the United States that UPS will carry. And exactly what UPS cost me to ship it. Which is anywhere between $13, $14 up to the most expensive one I ship. I live in Southeast Tennessee. And I shipped one to Seattle, Washington, and it was $27. That's the most expensive one I've had this year. Very nice. I have a Byron stand. You know, that, like I say, this is a slight modification of his. Where he had holes drilled in it right here and had lynch pans in it. Well, I don't do that. I put set collars or clamp collars on it. I don't have to drill it. It's easier and faster for me to make them. And the screws that hold the clamp collars. The same size as this. You don't need a different kind of different size valve ring. Quarter 20, 316 gallons? That's right. It's quarter 20 by, these are 3 eighths. I think these are about probably 3 quarter in the collar. That's whatever comes in the collar. But they're the same size valve ring. And these are, if you happen to lose one of these, go to any hardware store and get a quarter 20 by 3 quarter thumb screw. They're, they're common, common items over the ship, on the ship. Nothing special about them. Thank you. I appreciate that. Paul, maybe you can tell everybody we know one of the worst colors, the colors red. You yes. were red, I breathed through everything, so you told me what to do with it. Maybe uh, several it. years ago, John called and had a uh, question about how to keep the red from bleeding through, and I suggested that he paint black over it because that holds and seals the red color. Anything else you paint over red, it's gonna bleed through and change the color. You put white, it's gonna make a pinkish or whatever. So just remember to use black, just one good coat on it, let it dry, and you can come back and put your paint over it and you won't have any problem with it. Yep. So. A few more people coming in. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else got any problems with their paintwork and stuff or any questions they want to ask or have answered or anything? Uh, a lot of times I have people call me about humidity. Uh, painting in humid situations is kind of a touchy thing if you don't have an air conditioned shop or something. Uh, a lot of times you'll need to use a little retarder, but you have to be very careful not to use too much retarder because that has a tendency to melt. You know, if you use way too much, the paint can really just kind of melt off the thing and ruin everything. So, but basically, 
Uh, does anybody want to talk about how they build their feet and work up when they, after they start sanding or anything on their balsa wood? Everybody has a little different processes a lot of times. Yeah, what I what I do, Bob, and I, and I try to cut short, make short cuts sometimes, it always work, but what I do is I give it, give it, set the coat to clear on the whole airplane, and I don't sand it. Then I come back with primer, and I hit it with the primer, now I'll sand it down to the clear. Okay. And I can see when it get down to the clear. Yep. You know, and that, that works for me. And you can even sand it past the clear, right? You yep. try not to go into the bolts right, right again. Right, right. Uh, do you I, thin the spark six coats? Yeah, what I do is I set it almost 70% because it'll absorb into the wood. Now, everybody wants to use that. What is it, Bob? It's dangerous uh, to get in it. Uh, retarder? No, not retarder. Uh, all the free flight guys use it because uh, uh, nitrate. I don't use nitrate at all. I don't either. No, no, I stay away from nitrate, but I'll thin my paint more. And it does the same thing. Because when you thin it 70, 60, 70 percent, it soaks right down into the wood. You've got the same grip. A lot of things people aren't aware of is that the, when your clear dries out and all the thinner flashes out of it and everything, your butyl rate uh, clear actually loses weight as your plane dries more and more. Um, I think John probably starts out also, a lot of you guys, you sand your balsa wood first, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but he, what grits do you use to begin with? All the way down to about 400 on the bare yeah, wood. What's, what do you start with to begin I start with? with about, well, 150 for rough sanding in, and okay. then go to about a 320 mm -hmm. as I'm getting closer, and then I complete the airplane then as far as into one piece, or right before I'm going to start on, on the color base case. And then I go to like a 400 grit or something like that and do the final sanding and that's where you're rounding over all your cap strips, you know, you're getting into all the corners, you're doing all your details. Yeah. Round, round you're not your cap strips. Yeah, you're not yeah. taking anything off. You're not shaping anything yeah. at that point. You're just doing the final thing right before you start putting your base clear coats on. Yeah. Then use uh, three coats of clear, bend about 50%. It seems to build up pretty good. If you thin it too much, sometimes, I don't know, I've had a hard, hard time getting less than 10 ounce finish on an airplane. <laughs> and that's that's a big airplane, a 60 inch yeah. airplane, a 10 ounce finish. And I think it can be done at, at eight or six, but the three coats are clear. And then sometimes I determine at that point, I put my paper on, another three coats on the paper. And then I decide, well, am I going to use primer or not use primer? Well, it depends on how things are building up. And each airplane is different. Each grain of wood is yes. different, you know. And if it builds up good, and I've got everything covered with paper, covered all solid wood with uh, jack tissue or lightweight tissue, right. and then open base wrapped with like a medium weight silk span. Never use heavy weight silk span or never use lightweight. <laughs> You know, on the open bay. Uh, so then you got your three base coats on there, and I start seeing them and everything. I see, well, does it does it need primer? Does it really need primer? Primer is more to fill in the flaws and to get a flat surface, obviously. But it's also a blocker coat to make the airplane a uniform color, so that when you do put your color on there, everything either pops. You use a dark primer. You get darker, deeper colors. You use a white primer, you get a brighter, more red gel pop, and everything popping color yeah. out of the, the paint scheme. So then I determine, okay, how am I going to paint it? What color? You know, and that then if I'm going to use a primer, then that's when I determine: do I want a white primer? Do I want you know a white base? White primer means a less white base. You know, or maybe no white base at all. White primer comes out nice. That's my white on my airplane. <laughs> you know, and then I just do the other colors. Uh, but then I color sand also each individual color. Okay. You know, so if I paint half the plane red and half the plane blue, blue got sanded and the red got sanded. And I found that if it's dry, real good and dry, and you're just doing it wet, you don't get any bleed over where you transfer one color into okay. the other. And sometimes I'll put maybe even a clear coat on the colors at that point. 
just to get one little light coat of clear on it. <coughs> so then I'm, I'm fixing to start doing all the little final little trim strips, the trim colors, and all that, the fine line markings or ink lines. Mm -hmm. Always want to put a coat of clear on any color before you do your ink lines. Okay. Yes. And in that way, if you make a mistake, you can clean them off, because otherwise they'll bleed right into the color, especially white or something like that, and you can't get that the bad ink line off of it, you know. So uh, get a couple coats of clear on it, then do the ink lines. And then a couple coats of clear after that. And I try to keep it down to uh, no more than four coats of clear. And that's then 50 to 60 percent. But it's a 10 ounce finish. Yeah. <clears throat> I realize it's a lot of airplane and a lot of paint, but I still, I'm struggling. <laughs> You know, to get this finish lighter, I, I would like to see eight ounces. That's a you know, ten ounces a lot. To, you can definitely get your finish lighter if you sand all your primer off. The yeah, yeah primer absolutely. Primer absolutely. Yeah. You know, and then I mean, it's paper thin. You can read the newspaper. Yeah, through exactly. it, you know, uh, uh, they determine the same thing, kind of basically, that you do and uh, start out. But they don't, <laughs> and you don't put your primer on your open base. Right. Yeah. Right. You well, to do that, that, do that. it's very difficult to sand the open bays, and it just adds weight and it just stays there. So I've I've gone to even using a gray uh, colored tissue paper, uh, almost that tissue paper, but uh, super light tissue on all the wood surfaces. It gives it gives you the primer blocking with all one color because it's gray. It's a real light gray when you get your clear on there, okay. so it doesn't darken up your colors on you. And then no primer. A couple coats of clear and that real fine paper seals right in and gets slick smooth. And you can go right straight into colors with zero primer whatsoever. And, and, and then your clear coats on top of everything and you're, you're good to go. So you can, you're doing away with primer completely. Anybody else have anything to add or see difference of how they do their stuff? I reset it. And I just start sanding and actually the primer acts like a guide coat because wherever you haven't sanded it good enough, you're going to show the white primer still in the grain of the wood. So you know you need to go back and do something there. Or you can sand it enough and you want to try and be careful not to sand through the clear down to the tissue paper. Mm. <clears throat> sand that and then I'll come back and I'll put a coat of clear on and then I start uh, painting white. I usually use white for a base color. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll put on maybe one coat of white and then I'll put on maybe one or two coats of thin red or yellow or black, whatever I'm painting. And then I'll put a, and I probably shoot my clear a little thinner than that, I'll, I'll, about 70%. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll put on two good coats of clear and then I'll start doing my, uh, and I sand that also because I found that ink lines work a lot better on a sanded surface. If you try to ink line on a paint that hasn't been sanded clear, oh, man, it just doesn't want to go down there. And you wind up, you can actually put a groove in your damn uh, airplane because you're trying to press a little harder to get that yeah. ink to come out. You can use talcum powder to, yeah. to aid the ink yeah. to go on. So you can use that and I put my ink lines on. Uh, I seal that with probably one coat of clear if I've got all my graphics and everything on. And uh, then I put on my last coats of clear, sand it, and a lot of planes I don't sand, but a lot of nice finished planes I'll sand. And then we've, we have found the 5,000 grit sandpaper just recently. Um, the finest I've ever used, even on a car, is 3,000. And it's a lot of elbow grease. You know, you start sanding with 1,000 grit, you go to 1,500, or maybe 1,200, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, where do you stop? Because actually a model airplane, you need to go up to the finer because it's going to polish a lot easier. And what do you use as a medium for lubrication? I use soap and water. Dish, dish soap? Dish soap, yeah. And hot water and dish soap? Medium. You know, not hot, hot water, but yes. Wait, you're you talking dry sand sanding or wet sanding? Oh, gee. I'm well, sorry. Important. When you transition between dry I'm sanding and wet sanding? Afterwards, I guess. The transition of the paper 
Yeah, when do you start using wet sanding uh, techniques as, as opposed to dry as soon, sanding? As soon as I got clear on my, okay, my right. airplane, yeah. then I'll start going. Yeah. So before color, after color. Yeah. 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 yeah, transition starts when you first got my first coat of clear on the thing. Mm -hmm. And then I'll start sanding lightly with, uh, and I may start with 600. You know, because I don't want to put deep grooves, but the nice thing about butyrate is like lacquer. You can paint it over 180 grit sandpaper. Mm -hmm. When you sand it and rub it out, that's not going to show if you sand it smooth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when you put every coat of paint on, that all flows together, and the lacquer all seeps together. Mm -hmm. it does, it does, yeah, it doesn't, mm -hmm. like, like your new paints today, you have to make sure the surface is sealed. You know, and doesn't have any sandy grooves in it because the goddamn stuff's going to show. Yeah. But with lacquer and stuff, man, you could just come back and yeah. change it. It just, it just, it just melts yeah. all yeah. those little scratches away. And yeah. So yeah. It, it's very interesting. And a car is a lot easier. I mean, you can use your big old buffer and you can polish all this out. And with a model airplane, even if you use. If you do dare use a buffer, you've got to have somebody holding on to the plane, and you've got to be really careful because if it catches on anything, your plane's probably gone. Have you found that something like Sikkim's cuts better when you're wet sanding than Sikkim's? soapy water? Wendy always did that with yeah. Sikkim's. I found that uh, it cuts faster. Okay, I've never, uh, I've never done that, but, does. but I know saliva does. Yeah, I, and then it depends on how much soap you put in your water. Yeah. You can put too much soap and it makes the sandpaper sort of float. Yep. And it's not cutting, yes. and so you really only want, and they say just a drop or two. Yes. They mean just a drop or two. You, you don't know, need much it's, it's not much. It's, it's, all it is is something to make that powder float yep. so that it doesn't clog your sandpaper up. So but Wendy has always used seconds. I used to get the seconds for him. Yep. And he did all of his sanding with seconds. And like he says, it does cut better. But soap and water, it's a yeah. lot cheaper. It's cheaper, yeah, <laughs> definitely cheaper. <laughs> and a lot easier to come by because a lot of places, that's why I had to send it to Wendy because he couldn't buy it anymore. So but everybody, everybody has their own little techniques and different things. And like you said, sometimes you can take a shortcut that works for you. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes so. you take a shortcut mm -hmm. and you say, mm -hmm. <laughs> I wasted that time. There's a degreaser, I think it's called a Krilly Clear or something like that. So it's a degreaser. It acts like Sickens does. I think that's really what Sickens is. Oh, yeah. It's a degreaser. Any degreaser, anyway, I'm sure, would work. Uh, that's readily available still. Yeah. Sickens is sometimes hard to find depending on where you're PPG at. PPG 330 uh, would be sufficient. Don't use the 440 because that'll take your paint right off. Uh, 330 DuPont's is. I'm not sure what their number is, 3680 or something like that, wax and grease remover. And uh, you can buy stuff at Western Auto, not, I guess they aren't around anymore, but Advanced Auto Parts. They have little quartz of stuff. That, but you might as well go to a paint store. You need to watch that stuff yeah. and wear rubber gloves if you're going to yeah. be sanding with that stuff now, to safety water it. Does anybody use automotive paint besides putting urethane clear on the front part of the airplane? Yeah. Okay. Does anybody want to know? I have a question about dope before we go any further, and this will this covers Brodac dope specifically. What is the difference between butyrate dope and crystal clear? Clear and crystal clear. Okay. Basically, it's the clear, and that's it. One of them has a little amber cast to it. And the crystal clear basically is supposed to be clear. Can you spray crystal clear over butyrate? Yes. Oh yeah. Why the girls up there tell me I couldn't? No, I it's it's butyrate. Yeah. Crystal clear is butyrate <laughs> clear. And, and, and why I discovered that? I, I had the other clear. And that bad joke tell me how your paint start turning brown and all that. Yeah, well, that did. wasn't that. Because it's got an amber color. Crystal clear is where we mix all of our paints. All of our colors are mixed with crystal clear. Okay. And that's why I said, why don't we just put this on? You know, call it crystal clear. So. You know, I'll tell you what, the guys don't like to buffer nothing. If you want to go your last coat, 70% 70, 70 thinner, crystal clear, that thing will shine like you won't be. You know, just send it. So can, I keep, point there. can I exchange the, the quart or pine or whatever I bought, the biggest can you had, oh, yeah. of the gear for the click? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. John just brought this up. I'll do. On dark colors, I'll use 
mm -hmm. the regular clear, as long as it's not too amber. Because the only color it's going to affect when it's an amber cast are your light colors, silvers, whites, light blues, yellows, what have you. So you want to use the crystal clear all the way through if you're using a light color. But on a lot of my planes, like if it's red or dark blue or something, I'll just go ahead and I put my clear coats on. Then I'll sand that. It's like 600. And like John said, then I mix my crystal clear. And I'll put one or two coats on, wet. And man, mm -hmm. Let's, go ahead. it sands so much easier. And I mean, no, no dope sands easy. It it sands very quickly, but it doesn't sand easily. Let's talk about one other question, and this has to do with Wendy. Now, w nobody can deny Wendy is an excellent finisher. He has he does one thing I don't agree with, and maybe you can explain to me. The adhesion problems of putting silver on your airplane before you put color yeah, on it. I don't like that either. Silver is metal. Yeah, yeah. Let me explain a little something. Yeah. Sure. If you've been around model airplanes as long as we all have, when you see a plane crash that's had a silver base coat before they paint their other colors over it, you'll notice that the color separates from the silver. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, take white, take the regular yeah. white paint. I just put regular white, but I can handle it. Put a I couple see, drops yeah. of black it in just, it. Yeah. You can tint it in however dark you yeah. want to with a little drop of black at yeah. a time and stir it up and that keep adding and get whatever. Yeah. Uh, but but I have never been, been a, want. never been a believer of painting my base color silver mm -hmm. and starting from there. And besides, you paint yellow over. What color does it turn? Brown. <laughs> Brownish green. Yeah. I mean, now I had I had my Takano yellow, but it, it I used the regular clear dough, and I didn't realize it at the time. This is about the time he changed and he came out with the crystal clear. Mm -hmm. But I used the regular, and after about a year, it started yellowing a little mm -hmm. bit, and it was white and red. The yep. red you couldn't tell it, the white you could see it, it was looking sort of antique yep. and white color instead of bright white. And I called John up, and he's like, well. You got to use the crystal clear because <laughs> yeah. this stuff's got a tin in it. And I didn't even pay any attention mixing it with thinner. Or anything. And use it for a base coat's okay. Yeah. And I use because it's cheaper. Yeah. I base coat. Yep. When I go to finish it, then I, I go to crystal. Yeah, the final top coats, yeah. you go to the crystal clear and only use that right at the very final top coats and you're fine and dandy and it, it comes out nice and clear. Tell them girls in the office or in the yeah. hobby shop because they told me don't get that. Well, <laughs> back to what I was yeah, starting to say about painting automotive paint. If you see a car and you'd like to paint your plane that color, it's very easy to do. Go to your paint store, tell them say 19 or 2016 Chevrolet pickup truck, this color here. I want this here and I want you to put the binder in it, but I don't want you to add any clear to it. So you might not get a full pint of paint, okay? Then you take that and I mix mine one to one. Rodacto, one pint, one pint. I mix the color up. I've got my paint. I can paint it just like the, the color of the car on it. And everything adheres to it, and you don't have any problems. I keep hearing that it's the binder that you don't want to put in. You have to put the binder in because the binder, if it's in the formula, that's what makes the paint dry. I thought that's what the, you're, you're using the do. That's the vehicle. Well, that adds well, to I, it. I know. It yes, but if, if you're if you're going to have an automotive paint at all, because their stuff is you need the binder in it, and I've been doing it for years. Right. Right. I don't. I don't. Yeah, binder. Or question you know, anything put the binder like that, in. but I've always yeah. heard to put the binder. Ask her without the yeah. binder, yeah. And, and you just get the base colors and you mix that yeah. with clear dope and plasticizer. Yeah. Okay. Plasticizer. <laughs> only works for a short period of time. It eventually dries out of your paint. So there's not a lot of use to, to, even, to use it. Even the castor oil? Pardon me? Even castor oil? Castor oil. <laughs> I use one drop of castor oil per ounce of dope. I've never heard that except yeah. for some other oh What's the purpose I was of in that? Topeka. It's a plasticizer yeah. and it okay. makes the dope shine better too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was in Topeka and it's the, not the, the guy told me that. Uses just a drop yeah. of castor oil per ounce, per ounce of dope, and I, I thought, my God, I know. You I think that'd have fish <laughs> out of who laid the rail? You know, it, it makes it more rubbery 
uh, if you ever taken like a dupla color and painted an airplane and then watched it uh, like an alligator about six months later because it's got little hairline cracks all the way through it, there's no flexibility to it. Well, mm -hmm. dope inherently has some flexibility to it, but this will add even more flexibility to it where it'll crack even less. And the Flexol used to, like stuff called Flexol, it used to get, yeah. which was a different, it's not cash flow, there's a special stuff. Yes. No, I've, I've uh, never had a paint job turn like that, but I know the people. Now you're the second person that said I yeah. one drop per round. Yeah. 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 Cast um, before we go to automotive, that spiel that I gave didn't record, so I'd like to give it again real quick. Yeah. Me? Okay, do that again. I want to shut that off. I want to move these things because I want to bring it north on that side. Okay. We'll be right back. Bob,